If there are many losses in your life, or many things are going wrong, you might examine the ways in which you are taking. Some people who would not dream of stealing things will self-righteously rob another person of time or self-esteem. Each time we make another person feel guilty, we are stealing self-worth from them. To be truly honest on all levels takes a great deal of self-examination and self-awareness. When we take something that does not belong to us, we are, in effect, instructing the universe that we don't feel worthy of earning. We aren't good enough, we want to be stolen from, or we believe there is not enough to go around. We believe that we must be sneaky and grab to get our good. These beliefs become effective walls around us that prevent us from experiencing abundance and joy in our lives. These negative beliefs are not the truth of our being. We are magnificent and deserve the very best. This planet is abundantly plentiful. Our good always comes to us by the right of consciousness. The work we do in consciousness is always one of refining what we say and think and do. When we clearly understand that our thoughts create our reality, then we use our reality as a feedback mechanism to let us know what we need to change next. Being absolutely honest, down to the last paperclip, is a choice we make out of love for ourselves. Honesty helps to make our lives run more smoothly and more easily. If you go to a store and they don't charge you for something you've bought and you know it, then it's your spiritual obligation to tell them so. If you are aware, you call it to their attention. If you don't know it or only realize it when you get home or two days later, then that's something different. If dishonesty brings disharmony into our lives, Imagine what love and honesty can create. The good in our lives, the wonderful surprises we have, these too we have created. As we look within ourselves with honesty and unconditional love, we will discover so much about our power. What we can learn to create with our own consciousness has far greater value than any amount of money we could possibly steal. Your home is your sanctuary. Everything is a reflection of what you believe you deserve. Look at your home. Is it a place that you really love to live in? Is it comfortable and joyous, or cramped, dirty, and always messy? The same with your car. Do you like it? How does it reflect the love you have for yourself? Are your clothes a bother and a nuisance and something you have to deal with? Your clothes are also a reflection of how you feel about yourself. Again, the thoughts we have about ourselves can always be changed. If you want to find a new home, begin by opening yourself up to finding the right place and affirm that it is waiting for you. When I was looking for a new home in Los Angeles, I couldn't believe that I would only find appalling places. I kept thinking that this is Los Angeles and it's filled with wonderful apartments, so where are they? It took me six months to find the one I wanted and it was magnificent. During the time I was looking, the building was being constructed and when it was finished, I found it waiting for me. If you look for something, but you're not finding it, there is probably a good reason. If you want to move from where you are because you don't like it, thank your present home for being there. Appreciate it for sheltering you from the weather. If it's difficult to like it, start with one part of the house that you like. It may be a corner of your bedroom. Don't say, I hate this old place, because if you do, you're not going to find something that you love. Love where you are so you can be open to receiving a wonderful new home. If your home is messy and cluttered, then start cleaning it up. 
Your home is a reflection of your mind. Loving relationships. I'm a great admirer of Dr. Bernie Siegel, the Connecticut surgeon, who has written Love, Medicine, and Miracles. Dr. Siegel has learned much from his cancer patients, and I would like to share what he says about unconditional love. Many people, especially cancer patients, grow up believing that there is some terrible flaw at the center of their being, a defect they must hide if they are to have any chance for love. Feeling unloved and unlovable and condemned to loneliness if their true selves became known. Such individuals set up defenses against sharing their innermost feelings with anyone. Because such people feel a profound emptiness inside, they come to see all relationships and transactions in terms of getting something to fulfill the vaguely understood void within. They give love only on condition that they get something for it. And this leads to an ever deeper sense of emptiness which keeps the vicious cycle going. Whenever I give a lecture and allow my audience the opportunity to ask questions, I can always count on being asked one thing in particular. How can I create healthy, lasting relationships? All relationships are important because they reflect how you feel about yourself. If you are constantly beating yourself up by thinking that everything that goes wrong is your fault or that you are always a victim, then you are going to attract the type of relationships that reinforce those beliefs in you. One woman told me that she was in a relationship with a very caring and loving man, yet she had a need to test his love. So I asked her, why would you test his love? She said that she felt unworthy of his love because she wasn't loving herself enough. So I suggested that three times a day she stand with her arms open and say, I am willing to let the love in. It's safe to let the love in. Then I told her to look into her own eyes and say, I deserve and I am willing to have, even if I don't deserve. Too often you deny your good because you don't believe you can have it. For instance, you want to get married or have a long-lasting relationship. The person you go out with has four of the qualities you want in a partner. You know you're on your way. You want a little more of this or want to add a little something new to your list. Depending on how much you believe you deserve to be loved, you may have to go through a dozen people before you get what you really want. Likewise, if you believe that a higher power has surrounded you with truly loving people or that everyone you meet or know brings only good into your life, then those are the types of relationships you will ultimately draw to yourself. Codependent relationships. Personal relationships always seem to be the first priority for many of us. Perhaps you are always searching for love. Hunting for love doesn't bring the right partner because the reasons for wanting love are unclear. We think, oh, if I only had someone who loved me, my life would be all better. That's not the way it works. One exercise that I recommend is to write down the qualities you want from a relationship, such as fun, intimacy, open and positive communication, etc., and look at your list. Are these standards impossible to fulfill? Which of these requirements could you supply yourself? There's a big difference between the need for love and being needy for love. When you are needy for love, it simply means that you are missing love and approval from the most important person you know, yourself. You become involved in relationships that are codependent and ineffectual for both partners. When we need someone else to fulfill us, we are codependent. When we rely on another to take care of us so that we don't have to do it ourselves, we become codependent. Many of us from dysfunctional families have learned codependency from the way we grew up. I believed for years that I was not good enough 
and I sought love and approval wherever I went. If you are always telling the other person what to do, then you are probably trying to manipulate the relationship. On the other hand, if you are working to change your own inner patterns, then you are allowing things to happen in their right course. Take a moment to stand in front of a mirror and think about some of your own negative childhood beliefs that have been affecting your relationships. Can you see how you are still recreating the same beliefs? Think of some positive childhood beliefs. Do they hold the same charge for you as the negative ones? Tell yourself that the negative beliefs no longer serve you and replace them with new positive affirmations. You may want to write down the new beliefs and place them where you can see them every day. Again, be patient with yourself. Persevere with the new belief as much as you did with the old one. There were many times when I slipped back into old patterns before my new beliefs took root. Remember, when you are able to contribute to the fulfillment of your own needs, then you will not be so needy, so codependent. It all begins with how much you love yourself. When you truly love yourself, you stay centered, calm and secure, and your relationships at home as well as at work are wonderful. You will find yourself reacting to various situations and people differently. Matters that once may have been desperately important won't be quite as important anymore. New people will enter your life and perhaps some old ones will disappear, which can be scary at first and also wonderful, refreshing and exciting. Once you know what you want in a relationship, you must go out and be with people. No one is going to suddenly appear at your doorstep. A good way to meet people is in a support group. It enables you to connect with people who are like-minded or who are involved in the same interests. It's amazing how quickly you can meet new friends. There are many groups and classes available in cities all around the world. You need to seek these groups out. It helps when you associate with people traveling a similar path. An affirmation I suggest is, I am open and receptive to wonderful good experiences coming into my life. It's much better than saying I'm looking for a new lover. Be open and receptive and the universe will respond for your highest good. You will find that as your self-love grows, so will your self-respect. And any changes that you find yourself needing to make will be easier to accomplish when you know that they are the right ones for you. Love is never outside yourself. It is always within you. As you are more loving, you will be more lovable. Beliefs about money. Having fear about the issue of money comes from our early childhood programming. A woman at one of my workshops said that her wealthy father had always had a fear of going broke, and he had passed on the fear that money would be taken away. She grew up being afraid that she wouldn't be taken care of. Her freedom with money was tied to the fact that her father manipulated his family through guilt. She had plenty of money all her life, and her lesson was to let go of the fear that she couldn't take care of herself. Even without all the money, she still could take care of herself. Many of our parents grew up in the Depression, and many of us have inherited beliefs when we were young, such as we may starve, or we may never find work, or we may lose our home or our car or whatever. Very few children say, no, that's nonsense. Children accept it and say, yes, that's right. Make a list of your parents' beliefs about money. Ask yourself if you are still choosing to believe them now. You will want to go beyond your parents' limitations and fears because your life is not the same now. Stop repeating these old beliefs to yourself. Begin transforming the pictures in your mind. When an opportunity comes up, don't echo your past history of lack, history of lack, history 